and I welcome everybody to part number two of this uh, two-part video remember we're going to keep reviewing our topic of which a saga is better the Poseidon saga or the Asgard saga one is canonical one is not canonical so my name is Sid welcome to the video if you're new here go ahead and consider subscribing there's a red button down there and let's get this video to 10 likes without further ado let's start the video so if you remember last time we left off um we analyzed the Asgard saga so right now we're gonna analyze the aspects of what makes the Poseidon saga like unique you know because we're trying to compare both of them we begin Poseidon actually hold on there's something I actually forgot I need to translate this there we go Poseidon, Poseidon a repetitive saga that was not well developed all right. Once the Bronze Knights defeated Hilda de Polaris, it is discovered that she was being controlled by Poseidon. That's this dude right here, Julian Solo. You see, can see the name there, who decides to kidnap Athena. That's right. Since he was in love with her and wanted to save her from the flood he was about to cause on Earth. Yes, that's how our Poseidon saga opens. Um, he there's like mass inundations and tsunamis all across the you know main cities and countries of the world and it is caused by none other than julian solo uh, aka poseidon so uh let's just take a look at these awesome drawings i will not play the audio for you no copyright intended let's see i'm just gonna have poseidon's face show this is where so Saori wakes up. She's on, on, on the at the bottom of the ocean at Poseidon's temple. Who are you? She goes. There he is. So that's our main guy right there, our god, first god of the series. And yeah, he's trying to hit on Saori. So let's keep on. <laughs> Knowing the name of their enemy, the protagonists arrive in the underwater world and fight against the marine generals. As the warriors are, who are at, at the service of the god Poseidon are known, each protects a pillar that must be destroyed as soon as possible. Here we see that Masami Kurumada once again uses the same narrative from the Sanctuary Saga and that it was successfully resumed in the Asgard Saga. That is, Athena is in danger, the knights must rescue her and for this they must defeat the warriors of the main villain. Unfortunately for the author of Saint Seiya, this time the children did not identify with their with their new characters, the marine generals, as if they did with the warrior gods. Oh, that's interesting. Kids. With a few exceptions, this was due to the shallow depth, depth of the villains. Shallow depth of the villains. Well, yeah, you can say that. I mean, guys, the generals are awesome, but you we really don't get attached to them as you would with the uh, uh, god warriors of asgard because out of the top of my head i can remember uh isaac with yoga now that's a true general right there because they had a pass together they trained together and i believe i think it's gonna be mentioned again i'm getting ahead of myself it's gonna be mentioned in the video uh, in the article later that it not it is not canonical but then again, I might be wrong. So anyway, Kanon or Kanan of the Sea Dragon and Isaac of the Kraken. Oh, there you go. Are the only sea generals who have a proper story. All oh, right, that's right. Kanan is basically, well, you know who he is. Masami Kurumala made the former, the brother of Saga of Gemini, the patriarch. There you go. Well, the latter was the former partner of Hyoga of Saga. Cygnus. I don't know why it's in Spanish, but let's roll with it. The rest of the marine generals are one-dimensional characters, that is. They are villains villains because the script says they are. <laughs> uh, now that I think about it, that is true. We do not know their motivations and there is not much time to know them. Yeah, they 
couple of chapters and they're they're dead. Since after a couple of chapters they end up dying. <laughs> I keep guessing, man. I mean, since after a couple of chapters they end up dying anyway. The only salvation for these characters are their secret techniques and the design of their armor. True. However, they never proved to be a major problem and no one was saddened or saddened by his death as if it happened with the warrior gods. Most fans of Osami Kurumada defend this saga to the nail, ensuring that had it been faithfully adapted to the manga, okay, it would have been more successful. This is not entirely true, as very small details were missed. Okay, the most outstanding thing would be the fight of Sorrento of Siren. That's of course a marine general against the Aldebaran Taurus. Pause. We do not see that in the anime. Yes, Sorrento does fight and I believe defeats Aldebaran of Taurus in the manga. Oh, there you, uh, It says against Aldebaran Tauro and that ends with the death of the Golden Knight. Masami Kurumala realized this mistake and showed it alive in later chap. Really? It says it, but it's referring to Aldebaran. So he forgot he was the dude was dead <laughs> without giving much explanation. Oh man. So I guess we're gonna see some scenes of the actual manga play out. And I, and I don't know why it's at minute five, but anyway, let's roll with it. Is that Titus? Yes, it is. That's Sea Dragon. And, um. We were supposed to see. Oh, this is the part. This is where, where Siren makes his appearance in the hospital. And there we see Taurus's uh, gold cloth right on the side. You are. Yep, there he is. Big dude. I'm here to protect the the four bronze saints. Yes, yes, that's what it's saying there. I'm 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 gonna take care of them while they're recuperating. This is after the twelve uh the twelve house saga, remember. So it seems it's raining, everything's going well, and then he suddenly hears some music. Who's there? I just want Siren to show up so you guys can consolidate what I've been telling you. And there he is. Only in the manga, people. And, well, not to give you a spoiler, but he ends up decapitating Taurus. I don't know. That's. I mean, Aldebaran is pretty strong. Anyway, so it would not be the only time that Masami Kuruma kills a Taurus Knight. Repents and revives him. <laughs> it happened in Next Dimension. Oh no, don't tell me. Since Ox, the predecessor of, of Aldebaran, dies without pain or glory and comes back to life in later chapters. What in the world? Although the Sorrento fight from Sirena... That's wrongly, you know, typed, I guess. Although Sorrento Sirena fight... And the Aldebaran from Taurus looks interesting, it would not have changed the reception of the Poseidon Saga. It was so badly received by the children that the sales of the toys fell and it was decided to cancel the series. What? Without an animating the Saga of Hades. What? Is this true? Is this why we saw the Hades Saga like 20 years after? Like, well, you know, 18, 17 years after? Get out of here. It says, however, not everything in the Poseidon Saga is bad since there are very enjoyable chapters. Yes, especially the drawings. Especially the last two where Seiya, Hyoga, and Shiryu use the golden armor of Sagittarius, Aquarius, and Libra, respectively, to try to defeat the god of the seas. I'm not going to play that. We all know what that is. That's the, bla that's the onset to the last chapter. Although it had a good outcome, the Poseidon Saga left a bad taste. In the mouths of Saint Seiya fans who expected something different. Masami Kurumada's canonical story was repetitive. Her, it says her? His new characters did not like her. And that is why she is inferior to the Asgard Sarah. What the hell does that mean? Okay guys. I think I've read enough. 
um, this goes on and on and on and on and on and on. Actually, no, that's that actually the end of it, if you can see there. So anyway, what are my thoughts? Like I promised in part one, I agree with the article. What's the article saying? It, even though the Asgard saga is non-canonical, it stands out more and it's at the bar higher than the Poseidon saga, which is canonical. So something important, Toy Animation did something awesome here that they're masters of the fillers. <laughs> I, I mean that as a compliment. <laughs> and it's been demonstrated throughout many animes I've seen, not just saying Seiya. And again, the God Warriors have a more developed storyline uh, of Asgard, right? We have Siegfried, we have uh, Sid, which is the character in whom I inspired this channel, by the way. Um, we have Mime, we have Alberic, we have uh, uh, what's, it, what's his name again? The, the wolf dude, uh, Fenrir, and the uh, Thor, I mean, the list goes on. Uh, against, you know, the generals like we just read, I mean, there's not much of, of a backstory to um, Lunatix. I, I I think I'm saying the name right. You know the the general that transforms into everyone. You know, making them think that their you know their loved ones came back or something. Or how about El of Sila? I mean, he's a cool dude. He's awesome. His armor is awesome and everything. He's you know against Shun, but he doesn't have much of a background other than his name. We don't know anything other than his name. So why should we care? So. I guess that um, because of the story, the background of the characters, uh, the uh, emotional attachment that we felt towards the God Warriors make it a much more enjoyable saga. I'm not saying the Poseidon saga is bad, but remember that the topic of these two videos were which one is better. So I'll say one more time in case it's not clear. Because of the emotional attachment we get out of the God Warriors of Asgard, not to mention the cool armor designs, the Asgard saga it comes out on top from the Poseidon saga. There, there you go. So that's my take on it. I hope you do share my um, appreciation of it. And if you don't, that's cool. That's why we have this platform to share thoughts, ideas, and let me know down in the comments. Now, if you made it this far, all I need to say is thank you so much for watching the video. Go ahead and give this video a like if you think I've earned your like. Let's get this video to 10 likes. And also, if you think I've earned your subscription, there's a red button down there that says subscribe, a little bell, click the bell, all notifications on. I will be putting out content more frequently for you people. Thank you so much once again. This has been your host, Sid, and I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.